Hello and uh, welcome to what I believe is my fifth oil painting of Richmond Park. If you've seen the other ones you may know I'm trying to paint a picture from every month of the year and this one is August. My favourite time of day to walk the park is early morning just after the sun has risen and especially if there's a bit of mist on the ground as there is here. The first task is to get rid of the white of the board and just paint a crude version of the scene in thin paint. The paint I'm going to use for the whole painting is Winsor & Newton Griffin oil colours. These are alkyds which means that they dry fast and this painting mostly because of the mist is going to require a lot of layers and with these paints I will only have to wait three to four hours in between layers before I can carry on. With normal traditional oil paints that would be several days in between and the painting could take months. While I was talking I had started on the sky again for real this time and I'd started with just the basic shapes slapping on some thickish paint just to get it started and smoothly blending it all together just to get the general shapes. I let that dry and then you may have noticed I suddenly covered it over with a, a light colour and that's because I, th I felt it needed some adjustment as I'd gone too dark. So a very thin wash of light blue over the whole thing and I got it down to the tone I wanted. Now I've got the main shapes of the sky in place it's on to the finer details so the procedure is add the detail roughly and then using a very fine blender brush I'm just blurring it into the main cloud but leaving the outside edge sharp in most places with the occasional bit to be a blurry edge so the edges of clouds are often a mixture of sharp areas and blurry areas. You don't have to get everything right the first time you can add in areas, adjusting areas and then keep going until you think you've uh, got it right. And one of the most attractive things to this type of cloud is the highlighted edges that are caused by the sun being behind the clouds just catching the edge. And as this is uh, not long after sunrise the sun is still quite yellow but you don't need too much of that colour as it's easy to overdo it. So in this sky it looks very yellow but when you analyse the colour it's closer to white with just a hint of yellow but the blue emphasises it. After the sky the first thing to do is the furthest line of trees and with this line of trees it's going to be a very similar colour to the sky to the clouds here but I want them slightly darker and a little greyer. To make them darker I just added more of the French ultramarine and cerulean blue mix plus a little bit of its complementary colour which is orange and adding orange to a colour to this colour has the effect of making it move towards grey and while I'm painting this line of trees I start at the top edge and as I move down I just add a little bit of white to the mix so as I get a, a graduated tone going down as further down you start getting into the mist. Now everything I said there about the far tree line applies exactly to the next level forward which is the main trees. Exactly the same again just with a little darker paint and here there's a harsher line where the mist is at the bottom of the trees and I make heavy use of the blender brush to fade the bottom edge of the trees into nothing. In front of the trees is a dense layer of ferns but these get treated exactly the same way as the tree line except now the colour is a little bit greyer still for the furthest areas of the fern line and the colour has shifted towards green but like everything in the painting it's just layer on top of layer. I'm now on to the foreground and here I'm starting to pick out the individual ferns just give hint of them and as this is a lot closer to the viewer you're starting to see some real the real colour of the ferns so I've gone a lot more green. I'm not following the photograph precisely I'm just getting a, a flavour of what these ferns look like. They are the foreground but they're not the focus of the painting. The main focus is the big trees and where the sun peaks over the clouds but as they are still in the foreground they do need a little bit more detail so instead of just being silhouettes they do have some form so I'm adding the highlights where a bit of the light from the sun has just glanced across them. 
after I've gone over the full line of ferns with the highlight, some of them need picking out for extra highlight treatment as it's only the occasional fern that's just at the right angle for the sun to bounce off into my eye. And the ferns I do have quite a shiny surface that's causing this. Now as I'm getting close to finishing this, I'm less and less happy with the way these ferns are looking. Looking closely at the reference photo, the ferns are much more into clumps rather than sitting there individually. So after this layer has dried, I decide to ne nearly obliterate it all by just painting over all the ferns I've just done, but not 100% opaque because I do want some of this pattern of ferns to peek through in the odd place it just adds to the background texture but basically they're gone and I'm starting again. The plan on this second attempt is to make larger masses with fern shaped edges so as not to have as many noticeable stark individual leaves just sitting there. Like the first attempt I still do need to see the leaves of the ferns as they are so close to the viewer some of them no more than five feet away but I've got to get rid of that look of just individual leaves that's sitting there as these are large fern bushes and they are in clumps so I need far more of them. As I'm doing this I'm starting to fall into the uh, first attempts mistakes but I've decided just to keep going with this and I'll fix it with a, a dark wash over the top to push certain areas into shadow and stop looking like a a pattern that just goes right across the painting and more like something three-dimensional. And with the signature on, I'm considering it finished. It's the golden rule that once you put the signature on, you're not allowed to touch the painting afterwards. So I hope you enjoyed this painting demo and I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.